hey, it's like the third week in Easter and we get a reading from John chapter 10 about Jesus being the good shepherd, which is like like the low-hanging fruit of this stuff. Everybody knows the Lord is my shepherd psalm. Everybody knows Jesus is the good shepherd by some generic painting of him, like in a white bathrobe holding a cute little sheep. It actually kind of has the very same feeling of, well, generic. But we don't get a generic good shepherd in this text. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The goodness of the shepherd is actually not in his affection by wearing the nice bathrobe and petting the nice sheep. It's in his sacrifice. And when we confuse the two, it's not good. Because it's real hard to cuddle a sheep that is covered in mud and be affectionate towards one that is covered in something that just looks like mud. <laughs> so the real sheep that Jesus loves and holds, we always assume are awful clean, which is why we always paint them awful clean, almost almost sinless. It's, it's, it's weird how we like to imagine ourselves who Jesus would draw near to. Jesus loves all the little sheep. They're adorable. They never smell in the paintings. They're never actually covered in anything. They don't try and bite him. Everything is actually so clean that he can wear the white bathrobe while he works with them and not get dirty. It's the opposite of the gospel. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the one who bears our filth, who wears our sin. He gathers in not the white, pure sheep who have no sin, but the blemished. He gathers in the ones covered in filth, in sin, in not mud, in death. And he carries us unto life everlasting. He washes us clean in his blood. He makes us holy and righteous to stand before him. Not that we were that way before, but by bearing our filth and our agony after dying and rising from the dead, he gives us the measure of the same victory that we would be baptized, washed clean and carried with him into the glory of the resurrection. The painting isn't wrong, but you have to see it in light of the cross first because the good shepherd is not the good shepherd because he's affectionate toward the sheep, but because he laid down his life for them. You are holy and without blemish or spot, held in the arms of the Savior who will come again wearing a robe that shines like the majesty of the sun on the last day. But that's only because he first laid down his life for you. When you don't feel like you fit in because you don't feel particularly white and wholesome, look not to your works and where you've been and what's been done to you, especially not what you've done, but look to your baptism what's been done for you. Look to the cross where Christ has taken away your sin. Look to what the good shepherd actually does. It's not simply that he's affectionate towards you, but he has laid down his life for you, that you would live, that you would be righteous, that you would be gathered into his arms and held in a, a bond that even death itself could not destroy. Find your hope in this. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and that you. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.